Hi, I'm Mark Madursky and we're at the National Motor Soccer Museum. Behind me is the brand new Dirt Track Heroes exhibit sponsored by Allstate Insurance and also JNP Cycles. I'm standing here with a machine that's a quintessential Grand National machine. It's an XR750 Harley Davidson. They started making them in 1970. In 72, they went to this alloy engine. This is a Terry Poovey machine and uh, I just wanted you to see this because this is one of the the quintessential dirt track racing machines for the Grand National Championship. A lot of guys chose this because this was a production racer available essentially out of the crate, pretty much ready to race, although most tuners did a lot of improvements to them to make them really successful. Hurley Davidson made a series of production dirt track machines, the WR, the KR, and the XR. We're standing here with a KR 750 that they made from about 52 to 69. And you could buy one of these bikes in the crate, pretty much ready to race dirt track. It's a rigid suspension, open exhaust, and no brakes. If it was a TT you were entering, you might have a rear brake, but essentially brakes were not legal in dirt track racing at this point. This is a 1967 KR750, and its most important feature is that Bart Markle, Bad Bart, raced this bike and it's one of his championship machines from over the years, this particular one from 1967. We're really happy to have it here. It's on loan from Mike Lang, who's a Harley collector up in Wisconsin. Early on, most motorcycle racers wore black leathers, but as time went on and sponsorship came along, uh, little, little spicier designs came about. In the 70s, Yamaha hired a designer named Molly, M-O-L-Y, Molly, and um, he did this really nice uh, kind of a stripe design for Yamaha that uh, really became a classic. They used it on their leathers and on their bodywork on their race bikes, road racers, dirt trackers, etc. These two sets of leathers are from uh, Don Castro and uh, Kenny Roberts. Class C dirt track racing called for a 750cc or 45 cubic inch race bike. And I'm standing here in a group of machines that actually predate the Grand National Championship era of 1954. The Indian Scouts, one being a big base, the TT and a WR Harley-Davidson. But these machines continued to be raced into the mid 50s and guys like Bill Tooman and Bobby Hill still had success on these old flathead designs. Most of the American bikes raced in Class C were V-twins, but the, the British offerings worked pretty well in Class C as well. I'm standing here with a 57 BSA Gold Star. It's a single cylinder overhead valve where in this era most of the Harley Davidsons and Indians were flatheads. A little more sophisticated engine, but it's a single. It's got a big remote float carburetor on it. Nice, simple, rigid chassis. Got some adjustment available here. You can make different plates to change the wheelbase. Open megaphone and uh, just a, a nice basic uh, British machine that uh, did really well on, uh, on dirt and uh, road racing until the mid 50s when BSA brought out their uh, A7s, the 500 twin. An Iowa rider by the name of Rich King needed a new ride so he could get some more points and become an expert. John Kite looking around, seeing V-twins being successful in Grand National Championship racing took a 79 CX500 engine, which sat crosswise in a frame, kind of like a Moto Guzzi, put it transverse, the crankshaft's transverse in this bike, like a Harley or Indian V-twin. Built a chassis around the motor that way in a pretty traditional layout, and uh, hatched a machine that had some success. And uh, as we'll see in a minute, it, uh, it gave an idea to another company to, uh, build a machine, a factory racer, uh, in a similar arrangement. What I'm standing next to here is Honda's RS750, built about four years later. It's an air-cooled four-valve overhead cam, which the other one was a, a cam in, in crankcase, more of a pushrod type motor. So this is the most sophisticated dirt track engine, probably, for the uh, Class C. In between Kite's creation and this RS750 was Honda's NS750. That machine, like Kites, used a CX500 motor punched out to 750. So Kite and American Honda were thinking along the same lines to try and bring Honda some championships on the dirt. What we're looking at here is a bike that Don Castro rode, and I've got with me Don Miller, the guy that 
owns the bike now and restored it. Don Castro is first famous as a junior. He came up and got his ride with Triumph. Uh, Triumph supplied him with this motorcycle and in the end of 72, Don kept this one, continued to race it as a privateer. Tracy, the fiberglass works, came up with this body work here and pretty much stood everybody on their ear at the race of champions in June of 72. Attracted maybe a little bit too much of attention. The AMA banned it for slipstreaming and pretty much it just went into oblivion. Don lent it to a guy for a street bike used it for a while on that and uh, we got Don inducted into the AMA Hall of Fame. They put it on stage in Vegas with Don. He got to be reunited with the bike again and now the Dirt Track Heroes exhibit, it was only fitting that we bring it out here so everybody can see it. Uh, great exhibit, anybody gets out here, they did a spectacular job. There's really a good display of Dirt Track history here. One of the important factors in, uh, in understanding the history of Dirt Track racing and uh, getting to see it even before you were on earth perhaps, you know, looking at what was happening in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s is photography and also in some cases uh, oil paintings and, and other forms of illustration that capture it. Uh, for the Dirt Track Heroes exhibit, we brought in about 100 pieces of art, uh, photography, paintings again, and, and uh, prints, lithos of various sorts and uh, use those to help people understand how the leathers, the motorcycle, the tracks looked and, and the attitude of the machines uh, when they're in flight on, on the track, the dirt flying, the ass ends, you know, slid out, uh, you know, trying to make that, that next turn. So this rounds out the story. We've got the machines, the leathers, the photography, the paintings, and uh, it's all part of telling the story of uh, dirt track racing in America, and it's what we use for the Dirt Track Heroes exhibit, sponsored by Allstate and JP Cycles. We hope you'll get a chance to come to the National Motorcycle Museum in Anamosa, Iowa, just down the road one mile from JP Cycles headquarters, so you can check out Dirt Track Heroes, the current changing exhibition at the National Motorcycle Museum.